All right, guys, welcome to a new YouTube video. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how to properly lean bulk. It's a very simple concept, but it's a concept that there's still a lot of confusion around. And it's one of the most common questions I get in regards of how to actually do it. And so I just want to break down the main concepts here because I've essentially been on a lean bulk for the most part since I started my bodybuilding journey back in 2016, which was like seven and a half years ago. And a lot of people have been asking me how I've been able to build muscle while staying lean. And no, it's not steroids. I never have taken steroids, never will. I think sacrificing the quality of your health to get bigger faster is really stupid. And I would never even consider making that trade. There are still gonna be people that accuse me of it, but I don't really give a shit. I'm here to tell you how to lean bulk naturally because it really isn't too complicated. So let's get right into things here. Number one, on the fitness side of things, this is really gonna be true whether you're cutting or bulking, but you're obviously gonna to want to construct a workout routine where your resistance training to move your body from where it is now to the exact physique that you want to build. So a lean bulk is gonna be gaining weight slowly while maintaining a low body fat percentage. But while you're gaining weight, you're gonna to wanna to be intentional around the size that you're building and which muscles are getting developed and what your physique is gonna look like. Because five different people could go into lean bulk and create completely different physiques depending on the muscles that they focus on and the workout routines that they actually partake in on a consistent basis. And so you're gonna to wanna to construct your workout routine around the exact physique that you're gonna to wanna to build. So I'd recommend going to Google or social media and just picking out a person, it doesn't really matter if they're natural or not, so don't really worry about that because the idea here is maximizing your own potential naturally. And even if your goal, even if your North Star is a person that's unnatural, you're still gonna be moving in that direction naturally and that's all that really matters. So pick a person off of social media that you wanna look like the most and then it's good to have like a current photo of your physique, your goal physique, and then you can kind of construct your workout routine around moving your body from point A to point B. This is what we do with all of our clients just to get crystal clear on where they're at now versus where they wanna be. And then it's gonna be a matter of, again, constructing a workout routine that actually takes your body from point A to point B. So this would be based on a few things. It'd be based on how much time you have available each day, how many days per week you have available to work out, what type of equipment your gym has available, or if you're doing it at home, it'd be based off of the equipment you have at home. In order to get the physique that a lot of you guys probably want, you're gonna to have to do it in the gym for the most part, unless you have like a pretty solid home gym. For example, if you have a whole rack of dumbbells, up to like 45, that's fine. If you get really particular about your calisthenics routine, you can put in some work, but it's gonna be very hard to build like, again, the physique that a lot of you are gonna want with a body weight routine. So for the most part, a gym routine will be needed. And as far as a split goes, split meaning the order and combination of your workouts, it will depend on how much time you have available each day and how many days per week you're gonna work out. So the split for a person doing three workouts a week for an hour would look different than the person doing five workouts a week for 45 minutes, right? And so different examples of splits could be push-pull legs or push-pull legs with an arm day at the end or push-pull legs with an arm core and cardio day at the end or it might look like upper legs, upper core cardio. It could look like full body, full body, full body. It could look like many different things. The lowest common denominator is hitting each major muscle group at least once per week. If any muscle groups are aesthetically kind of lagging behind, hitting them twice per week as well so they can catch up to the other muscle groups. That's kind of like the general philosophy there. Um, you wanna make sure that you're progressively overloading in the gym, especially if you're on a lean bulk. You wanna be making sure that you're putting in sufficient amount of work in the gym to actually maximize the weight that you're gaining. My mindset is if I'm gaining weight, I wanna be going for it in the gym to make sure that, again, I'm maximizing those extra calories. That's kind of the general philosophy on the fitness side of things. On the nutrition side of things, a lean bulk is gonna be gaining weight, gaining muscle while maintaining a low body fat percentage. So your weight's going up, your muscle is building, but your body fat percentage is staying the same. It might be increasing a little bit depending on how fast you gain weight, or it might even decrease a little bit because if you're gaining muscle and maintaining your fat, then your body fat percentage will technically go down. From a bird's eye view, your body fat percentage is gonna be staying at relatively around the same spot, as opposed to a quote unquote dirty bulk where you're just gaining weight pretty fast, where you're gaining strength fast, you're gaining muscle fast, but you're also putting on some fat, getting some fluff. So to lean bulk, you're gonna to wanna to gain weight, but gain weight slow enough to keep your body fat percentage down. And this typically looks like anywhere from 0.1 to 0.5 pounds per week of gain. Everyone's body's different, but that's again, generally just like a very slow weight gain that allows you to lean bulk. And so it doesn't really matter if it's exact per week. Some, some weeks you might gain a pound, some weeks you might not gain anything, but let's say over the course of one to two to three months, 
you want to see that on average you're getting anywhere up to like a half a pound per week in order to do that from a calorie standpoint you need to be in a slight calorie surplus, meaning you're eating barely more calories than you're burning. A slight calorie surplus will lead to slight weight gain. And so you need to determine what that number is for you. If you wanna be super intentional about this, you can download an app like MyFitnessPal and start tracking your nutrition immediately and you'll become aware of what amount of calories is doing what to your weight. And so if you start tracking calories for the next few weeks and your weight's staying the same, you know that your average calorie intake that you tracked leads to your weight staying the same, which means you're eating your maintenance calorie intake. And so you know that in order to lean bulk, you need to have a slight calorie surplus so you can bump up the calories a little bit. You can bump it up 100, 200 calories per day and start to see that weight gain. If you track your calories for a week and you're already gaining weight, that's great, keep it there. If you track your calories for a few weeks and you're gaining weight pretty fast, like you're gaining weight at about a pound per week, you might wanna slow it down a bit in order to stay lean as you're going on the bulk. If you track your calories and you actually lost weight, then you obviously wanna bump it up a lot more, maybe like 500 to 800 calories per day just to initiate that lean bulk. Punchline here is eat the amount of calories that will generate, let's say 0.5 pounds per week of weight gain. On the protein side, at the bare minimum, you wanna be eating 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that would be 140 grams of protein. It would be a bit more optimal to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that'd be 200 grams of protein per day. Again, especially when you're on a lean bulk, you want to be maximizing those calories. And so making sure you're crushing it in the gym and making sure your protein is high will be two things that you want to prioritize while you're embarking on this lean bulk. From a fitness and nutrition perspective, that kind of covers the general philosophy. Again, going hard in the gym based on where your body's at and based on where you want it to be and based on how much time you have available, based on the equipment you have available and the amount of days per week you have available to work out, making sure that you're eating enough calories and eating enough protein in order to maximize the lean bulk. And I'll mention a few other things here that are kind of important. One of which is rest days. So you're gonna be going super hard in the gym. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're not overtraining. There's no binary right or wrong thing about rest days. I would just say, listen to your body. If after week one, you feel like you need to rest, take one or you might be ready to go for the next five weeks and you might not feel like you need to take one. Some workout routines already have rest days built within them by default. For example, if you're working out three times a week, then you already have four rest days a week, so it doesn't really matter. If you're working out six days a week, you already have one rest day in there as well, so that might be sufficient, but five weeks from now, you might need to take a whole weekend off or three days off, right? And so it depends on your experience level and what your body's used to handling and how hard you're going in the gym, but ultimately just listen to your body, take rest days, look after yourself, don't burn yourself out. Also, make sure that you're stretching. So after each workout, make sure that you're stretching and doing like one to two to three stretches for the primary muscles that you used in that workout where you're holding it for like 30 seconds, just a static stretch is fine. Those go a long way in muscle recovery, but also just maintaining mobility. Because if you're going hard in the gym and just workout after workout after workout and you're not really stretching, your body's gonna get super tight, your mobility, isn't really gonna be there. It's gonna decrease your quality of life because you're just gonna be so rigid. And so you do wanna maintain mobility and maintain some looseness in your body. So make sure to stretch. And again, just one to two to three static stretches at the end of each workout is fine. A Couple more underrated things, make sure your hydration is sufficient. So like usually a gallon of water is pretty solid, like three, four liters of water per day. This obviously also depends on how big of a human being you are. A person that weighs 250 pounds, needs to drink more water than a person that weighs 150 pounds. So scale it based on that as well, but just make sure you're hydrating sufficiently. Make sure you're also getting proper sleep, whatever that is for you, seven hours, eight hours, prioritize your sleep, do what you can to make sure your eyes are closed for the amount of time that they need to be closed in order to generate a good sleep. It will help you in your fitness journey, but it will also help you in life and your life goals as well. Last thing I'll mention here is that we're all human and we all fall off. And so if you fall off, just get back on track the next day. Don't let one off day turn into two. If you miss your calories or you miss your protein or you fall off your workout routine, it's okay to fall off, get back on track. It's cliche, but qu quitting is the only failure. And if creating this physique is something you're actually serious about, it's not gonna be a perfect journey and self-development rarely is. And so have some compassion with yourself, be disciplined with yourself and hold yourself to a high standard. But if you do make a mistake, if you do fall off, realize that it happens 
and realize that all you need to do is get back on track quickly to resume the process. So those are the main things that are important when it comes to lean bulking. I hope this video is useful for you guys. If you have any follow-up questions on this video, feel free to comment them down below. Or if you have any takeaways or feedback from the video, feel free to leave me a comment. And if you found this valuable and you want more fitness and self-development related tips going forward on a weekly basis, feel free to subscribe as well. And if you also have any video suggestions or future videos that you'd like to see, let me know as well. And you guys can connect with me on Instagram if you like as well. That link will be in the description. If you want to apply for my fitness coaching program, Elite Self Coaching, the link to book a free application call with me will also be below as well. Sometimes information that's like this, that's in this video is sufficient for somebody to go and attack just based on where they're at. But I know that some people also need that extra level of customized strategy and accountability to succeed at least in the short term with their fitness goals. So if you feel like that's you, again, the link will be in the description. But without further ado, if you stuck with me to the end, I appreciate your time. Again, I hope this was valuable for you and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.